Els here, and today we'll be talking about prepaid expense adjusting entries and their impact on the accounting equation. Before I get started, it's important to understand what prepaid expenses are. Because they include the word expense, a lot of students feel that these are expenses that should be recorded on the income statement, but that would be totally wrong. They're not expenses at all. Instead, prepaid expenses are assets. Why? Well, say you purchase a one-year insurance policy for $12,000 cash. Your cash goes down, so your assets go down. But the insurance policy has future benefit for the company because they now have insurance coverage for a year. If anything has future benefit, it's got to be recorded as an asset. So will the insurance ever become an expense? Absolutely. When you use your coverage to protect yourself over the next few months, you'll be using up your coverage. And then it'll move from being an asset on the balance sheet to being an expense on the income statement. But this will only happen over time. Are there other assets on the balance sheet that are similar to prepaid insurance? I mean, there are going to be prepaid expenses that start off as assets and then later become expenses? Yes. There's things like prepaid rent, which is when you pay rent in advance, prepaid fees, which could be things like professional fees paid in advance, and then there's prepaid subscriptions when you pay for, say, a year's worth of magazines. All of these prepaid expenses are called prepaid, and they have the word prepaid in them, so you know it's prepaid. Are there any assets which are prepaid expenses which don't include the word prepaid in their name, but they still have the same characteristics as prepaid expenses? Yes, there are, and often students are fooled by them. For instance, supplies are on the balance sheet under current assets. They're an asset because they benefit the future of the company. They'll be used up in the future to help generate revenue, which means that they're going to become an expense. That's the same as prepaid rent. You start off as an asset, and then later on you become an expense. So supplies are really a prepaid expense that don't include the word prepaid. Are there others? Actually, many of the accounts under property, plant, and equipment are prepaid expense accounts. Let's look at equipment. It's an asset because it has future benefit for the company. It's going to be used in the future to help generate revenue, which means that it's going to become an expense. That's the same as supplies and prepaid rent. And so equipment is also a prepaid expense that doesn't include the word prepaid. Actually, a lot of asset accounts are prepaid expenses in disguise. We need to review the asset section of the balance sheet to see how many there are. Inventory is purchased in advance. It has future benefit for the company because we're going to sell it in the future to generate revenue. When we sell it, it becomes an expense called cost of goods sold or cost of sales. So it matches the characteristics of a prepaid expense. Prepaid insurance we know is a prepaid expense because it has the word prepaid in it. Remember, if you ever see the word prepaid connected to any account, you need to recognize that it must be recorded as an asset until it is used up. We already talked about how supplies is a prepaid expense, so let's move on to non-current assets. Buildings are purchased in advance. They have future benefit for the company because we'll use them as a location for our business. This helps us to generate revenue. Therefore, they're an asset. When we use the building over time, it becomes an expense. So again, this is an asset that is really a prepaid expense, even though we don't call it prepaid. Notice that as we recognize the expense due to usage, we record the total or accumulated amount of all usage in a contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is the total amount of all depreciation expense since the day we purchased the asset. We already talked about equipment. It's an asset because we use it in the future to help generate revenue. Like buildings, as we recognize the expense due to usage, we record the total or accumulated amount of that usage in a contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is the total amount of an asset that we have used up since the day we purchased the asset. Intangibles, which are things like patents, are also purchased in advance and have future benefit for the company because we use the patented process in our production. That'll help us to generate revenue in the future, so we record it as an asset. As we use the patent over time, it becomes an expense. Why? Because we're using it to help generate revenue. So, this is an asset that is really a prepaid expense even though we don't call it a prepaid expense. We can see that any asset that we purchase before we need it and then use up later or consume over time to generate revenue is really a prepaid expense, no matter if their name is something like supplies or prepaid insurance. Let's summarize what we know about prepaid expenses. When we pay for a prepaid expense, we record it as an asset because it has future benefit for the company. Then, 
when we use or consume the asset, we'll need to move some of the value of that asset from the balance sheet over to an expense in the income statement. This is because we've used or consumed it in order to help generate revenue. Let's do an example to solidify our understanding and actually see the entries that impact the accounting equation. ABC Company rents a new location on January 1st. The rent is $2,000 per month and they pay six months of rent in advance. Six times 2,000 means they've spent $12,000 cash on January 1st. The company has to report to the public quarterly, which means they produce financial statements on March 31st. Let's look at January 1st and see what entry needs to be made. Whenever we look at a transaction, we need to ask ourselves, what did we give up? What did we get, if anything? What did we use or consume? What did we earn? What do we owe? The first two questions are key questions and the last three help to clarify our thinking. So, what did we give up? We gave up cash of $12,000. That means that assets decreased by 12000 Did we consume or use anything? When we pay cash for things, students often assume that we have an expense on the other side. The question is, did we use or consume anything, not whether we paid cash? In this case, the answer is no, we have not. And because we have not, we can't record an expense. So expenses are off the table. What did we get? Well, we got the right to use the space for the next six months. Does that have a benefit? Yes, it does. It has a future benefit for the company. And because of that, we record it as an asset, prepaid rent, under the element assets. Remember, this is because it has future benefit for the company. What kind of transaction is this? It's an external transaction because it's measurable and realized. Realized meaning that it happened in the past. It is external because we exchange something with an outside party, someone who is external to the company. Entries that are external transactions are called transactional entries. Sometimes you'll see textbook call it an original entry, but I actually prefer the name transactional entry, indicating the transaction occurred with a third party and there was likely a paper trail, such as an invoice or receipt. Now, Let's fast forward three months. We're now standing in March 31st. We know the company is going to produce financial statements, so we have to be sure that all the assets on our balance sheet have future economic benefits equal to the value that we've recorded on the statements. If not, we have to make an entry to recognize the use of the asset. If we look at our prepaid rent account, the last time we did anything with this account was on January 1st. So on March 31st, we still have our January 1st balance. We know that this account was an asset because it had future benefit for the company, but is that future benefit still worth $12,000? And the answer is no, not anymore. We've been using the space for the last three months, so we have to recognize that some of the asset is now gone and the value has been used up and therefore has to be moved to an expense account. We said we used the asset for three months and we know that rent was $2,000 per month, so that means we've used up $6,000 over the last three months we have to reduce the asset account by this amount because the value has been used up. This means our ending balance in the prepaid rent account has to be updated to be $6,000, which is our original $12,000 less the $6,000 of rent that was used over the last three months. We still have three months of rent left for the future. That's why there's still $6,000 left in prepaid rent at the end of March 31st. In order to reflect that use, what entry do we have to make to our accounting equation? Well, we've used three months of rent and that means we need to recognize that use as a rent expense of $6,000. Students often then use cash as the other side of the entry. Is that correct? Well, we haven't paid any more money for rent, so cash is not impacted and you should leave it alone. Actually, adjusting entries never involve cash, so if we're making an adjusting entry, don't touch the cash account. Instead, what did we use? We used up three months of prepaid rent, so we should reduce the asset account by that amount. We would record a reduction in assets under the prepaid rent account of $6,000 for what we used up. Most transactions are triggered by something, a paper trail, a bill, an invoice. There's actually an exchange between the company and a third party, but adjusting entries are internal entries. There's no paper trail, nothing to tell us that we have to make an entry. Instead, it's an entry made by the company to recognize that they used or consumed something that had value before, and so it was an asset, but it no longer has any value because it's being used or consumed. It has to be moved to an expense. 
the entry is triggered by the fact that we have to report to external parties. And so we need to make sure that only those assets that still have future benefit remain as assets. All the assets that have been used or consumed have to be moved to an expense account, which is exactly what we have done in this entry. Let's look at both of the entries together. Remember that the first entry is a transactional entry because it's an exchange with a third party and it includes a paper trail, like an invoice. This is an external transaction. The second entry is an adjusting entry because it adjusts the accounts before we publish the financial statements. It's an internal entry because we adjust our records internally. There is no paper trail to tell us we have to do this. Instead, we do it to recognize use or consumption. What would show up on the balance sheet? Well, only the balance at March 31st, which will be $6,000, would show up on the balance sheet under current assets. Remember that there are many other accounts that will need to be adjusted every reporting period. I've listed a few here. They all need to be adjusted for whatever has been used or consumed since the last time the company published their statements. Adjustments can be made either monthly, quarterly, or annually, depending on the company. That's it for prepaid expenses right now. In our next video, we'll be focusing on unearned revenue adjusting entries.